Hello. Hi. How are y'all guys doing? Um, trying not to be annoying with this video. Uh, as you know, as I go out learning every day. Sorry. See, the spirit is bothering me right now. All right. So I coughed right when I turned on the video. Did y'all see that? And then I felt a wave of energy hit me. So that was spirit inhabiting me. And now it's making me give me OCD to where I'm not comfortable with my shirts. So this could all just be spiritual attacks. All right. So I just want y'all to know where all this erratic behavior is coming from. It's all spirit possessions. I'm not beyond spirit possessions. I'm letting y'all see this. <laughs> it is nothing. I'm not going to say that there's anything evil about it. And it, it is something that puzzles me about my makeup. Why I'm susceptible to these spirits, no matter how much I pray <laughs> and try to ward them off. So I need to be inspired, right? I just want y'all to take you on a longer journey with me today. My mind is going to tell this story because it's so bizarre, guys. I was not expecting to meet a psychopath, sociopath, narcissist, antisocial personality disorder type of personality. <laughs> it's not to say anything negative about this person. I'm not going to throw, the, the, throw their name or their profession or what their vision is under the rug because I totally believe in them. Foremost, I see all human beings as having potential and it doesn't matter what way you go about it. It can just be very uh, unethical means. You can indulge in criminality and violence and nefarious ways of getting things in your life. I realized that people go about so many different ways of getting what they want in life. And I can't judge nobody, but they do end up in prison. A lot of them can't escape. And they're not good, good criminals. There's a spirit that's in my room right now. And I'm trying to figure out if it's trying to make me feel uncomfortable to tell this story. Guys, you want me to tell this story? <clears throat> maybe I shouldn't tell the story. Or maybe I should just... Yeah, maybe I shouldn't tell the story right now. Yeah, my spirit doesn't want me to go into the details of the story with this person simply by the fact that they are out of prison and they are mur a murderer. They have robbed people. Were they trying to get in my head and get information about me? As you're asking me what I do for a living and where I'm from and getting my number real quick so we can do this business. So now that I'm a writer, now you can write about this book that I suddenly want to write. Oh, I just needed to be 20 pages. First he said 10 pages and then he's, I was like, well, that's not really a book. You want it to be more like a... Anywho, he didn't have a real concept. So we ended up getting about 30 pages. How much would that be? I really don't want to talk about how much I would charge you to write your book for you. I'm more concerned about integrity as I'm bringing this up. And he's like, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and I'm questioning the char your character now. So you can see how easy it is for man's character to just be under question. So this is going to obviously come up once you get the first infraction or that first inconsistent thing that comes up. You start asking, is everything else he's saying correct? This is what this woman is wondering every time she's talking to you with a straight face. You seem so good at intentions of your pursuits of us, of feminine energies. And it was like, at this point, it's just, just about 
ejaculating and going over in, in your head over the performance to just sort of give you like, I don't know, a romanticized version of what the love that you could real have in your life that you avoided with that person as you're ejaculating. I'm just trying to figure out what's fueling all this pursuit, your drives to want to, to, to woo and conquer whatever you want in your life. As you're constantly in the hole for shanking somebody and beating up somebody and proving yourself to climb this invisible social ladder. And I recognize that there's the testosterone and the, the life conditions that have set up the conditions and the inner conditions to just not care about your life as you're thinking you're preserving it. So it is success at all costs, at least what you've built in your head, what is success. And if that means killing a bunch of people to get fear and intimidation in the hearts of people where they don't cross you and respect you at all times, you can get what you want, then so be it. And I realized that I'm just not that type of person. God made me into a little vulnerable ape. I'm so docile. I'm so... I would be prey in a prison setting. That's why I care so much about speaking out against prison rape, coercions, <clears throat> uh, and just all of these edible conflicts that is uh, driving our aggressions and erotic fixations and desires. That's all I'm trying to just get into the heart so it can be healed this way. But you gotta turn on my video, you gotta watch my stories there's so many men out here that is broken. They got all kinds of stories, identities, and personas. They're making all these millions of dollars and got contracts and, and business deals. And they've been all over the country. And y'all got all these personas. I'm telling y'all, y'all ain't getting nowhere as you're working behind that counter uh, at that coffee shop. Talking about all your dreams and that book that you still, that you want to write. And y'all know that you, you probably won't accomplish half of all of that as you're having your websites and your business cards made and everything, are you really building the dream? The, where does that dream go? Don't give up on that dream. I know how hard it is in this country to keep your dreams going. I want to give up every single day. <clears throat> but something won't let me. And that something is what drives us to gets us in prison because uh, we do desperate things because we don't got no real hope. And hopeless people are willing to go at any time. Uh, but they are also willing to try extra hard and double double in their life because they ain't got nothing to fall back on. Um, so they become the most dangerous in life. And I just don't want you to self-destruct with any delusions. Find out what this vision is and just go about doing your self-healing as you're trying to get the fame, all the riches and the securities, the glamour, to be praised and finally seen and heard in your life. If you can get that good feeling and how you get long, you're gonna think that lasts for your back uh, wallowing in your own self-loathing due to not getting over the forces of the lies that have been told on your life that is being reinforced, reinforced every day in your environment, starting with you not feeling adequate in a relationship I just want y'all to be real with y'all selves about all y'all and ungodly and or just ambitions in general. I'm not gonna call them ungodly. But what's the point in creating all these websites for yourself and saying that you did all of these wonderful things in your life if that wasn't really the case? So I want it to be just for y'all to be honest and real with y'all selves. God loves you, man. And he understands all these mental and emotional problems that you're dealing with and faced with. You gotta come back to the source of who you are. You gotta come back to yourself so you can start chipping away all of these disorders, these labels that have been attached to you. Um, and it's keeping you isolated from everybody because they think you're antisocial personality now. We already have been knowing about the narcissism and I'm here to show you that I'm not afraid. I want, I love you. I'm not can't be afraid of something that I love. It's impossible to be afraid of something that you love. I love you so much. 
And I want to love you back to wholeness. Be real with yourself about the antisocial personalities, psychopathy tendencies. If you're wondering what are some traits of those, it's a really good book that I read some years ago by Cliquey. It's called The Mass of Sanity. Maybe you might be interested in reading case studies. I don't know. But it has a lot of good stuff in here about <clears throat> all this psychopathy that's in our environment that we just assume that it's just normal. Uh, but it's just disguised in our social behaviors, these personality disorders like our schizophrenia. When recognized, it's prompted to call a patient with mental illness and treated as such. But the psychopath, however, continues to be treated as a petty criminal at one moment as a mentally ill person at the next, and, and again, as a well and normal human being, all without the slightest change in his condition having occurred. So the condition of this psychopath is now in my face getting all this information about me because of his con artist had a nature, right? He wants to know how much money I'm making. Is it an opportunity to get some, um, to rob me? Because that's what he's been designed to do, or at least that's what he's been trained to do. So all he knows is come out, he just went, he was in there with this mentality and he came out and just transferred it over to how he was dealing with people. We're not getting to the mental illness of now, I have to see him as a normal human being because he's just physically out of the prison system, but he's still got that prison mentality is what I'm trying to get y'all to see. And he can be seen in this variables, these genetic variables will change, i.e. this inclination for criminality and petty thefts and robbery and stuff. There's all psychopathic genetic variations they just change due to his environment i was making an example of that when it comes to the white man's temperament this also plays into the psychopath as well petty crime petty criminal in the prison mentally ill person in the hospital and now he's a normal human being back in society being an influence, or at least feeling he's being an influence or doing what he's been called to do. Uh, and that is the vision. How can we not validate, how can we start validating these men to where it, we're, we're not gaslighting or low key thinking that, that what they're trying to do or their vision is far fetched or meet some sort of standard to where we think that this man has is, is believable for one, and he can actually carry this dream out and connect and let it grow. That is being a visionary is what I'm starting to see. And that does look crazy. It could look like psychopathy. And given the man's track record, I can't avoid that this petty crimes, the mentally illness that I'm witnessing and his antisocial personalities and unadaptability uh, and just the type of maladaptions and just quirks that I was seeing in his personality uh, in front of him did not display, I could not avoid that it did not display those psychopathic tenet, behave, traits. So I was asking God, wrecking my head all last night, what, what am I dealing with here? You know what I mean? He has everything to show of what he's about. You can go Google him and look him up and everything. Everything looks copacetic, but why do I feel settled in my spirit of it? Well, who is this person? Why do you attract me to him? And why do we have similar backgrounds as well? And why is this the second person in this prison sort of environment? You've now met, uh, introduced me to two people who um, do some type of outreach when it's related to um, inmates. You want me to go work at a jail or, or a prison? You want me to be a prison social worker or outreach counselor or something? How am I going to be doing that? I'm just trying to figure out what is going on. Uh, why am I meeting people that's been locked up and for like, and this is, <clears throat> this person hasn't had an easy role in their life. 
and now I'm before this person and this person wants me to write a book for them. How did I get involved with this? Uh, and it's just, so I guess you will be hearing about it or maybe you won't hear nothing else about this, but I know I'm definitely dealing with psychopathy because how can I assume that you have $25 million contracts and own three different houses in three different countries when I'm seeing you with a uniform on and you say, oh, I don't work here. I'm just, <laughs> I guess, volunteering is what he said. He knows the owner or something like that. It's, it was a very bizarre and strange situation. Uh, but I don't judge anybody. These are very distinct schizoid traits. Everything is encompassed with these types of personalities along with the schizophrenic his delusions hallucinations unmistakable objective manifestations of psychosis could appear um that's god wants me to just go ahead and follow my spirit to just start reading some of this that i'm noticing in the traits of these men that i'm noticing psychopathic tendencies in this is scary i don't want to ignore this no more because this, this is what's creating and sustaining this demonic male. <laughs> if I'm going to die of something, I'm going to die from speaking the truth on this. We're allowing these criminals to come out and they're just influencing other men to be demonic. And they have the predominance because they have more testosterone and the aggression. And these, for the most part, civilized men are scared of them. So we're dealing with fear and it's a spirit and that's demonic. And ain't no way if we're going to get into this new world, these rules are going to be built on fear. No, so we're eradicating this by speaking the truth. I'd rather y'all just go to uh, the other video because I don't want to be all over this book today, to be honest. Um, but I do want to take y'all into some of the characteristics of a or traits of a person with who is a con artist and i want y'all to be aware of this so if i ever run into people like this you won't be confusing yourselves about what you're dealing with oh Cornelius, where is this i want so much <laughs> all right so the signs of a con artist you have assimilation is the manipulators often will try to find common ground with your with their targets or victims. Uh, they find topics like special interests. So he found an interest in my writing. And then they'll change or adapt their personalities to mirror your personality. By the way, do you speak, think, act, or view things? And he started doing that very quickly with me. And once I told him, right, oh, what type of writing do you do? Oh, uh, I write novels. Oh, what kind of novels? And then I told him the subject and then he was like, oh, and that's what he wants to do. And I said, oh, really, that's interesting. He wants to write a book. This is the way to appeal to your ego. So he was appealing to my ego in that sense. It starts to disarm me. So now the question is, is what do you do for a living? Where do you live? Where are you from? All these questions are coming back to back. And I felt the energy of I don't need to divulge too much to him, but he was. It felt I felt kind of trapped and compromised to act, answer these questions with him as I'm sitting there at the bar. Um, the second sign of these con artists, uh, complimentary, they'll compliment you, show admiration, and stroke the ego of their on their of their targets. They are agreeable and they praise you to open you up to questionings. The third sign is curiosity and questioning. When they appeal to your ego, they will try to understand what's motivating your aspirations and your thoughts. Um, they'll mask questionings in the form. He started asking me questions about this, right? And he asked me about a system, about IGE or something like that. I don't know, but I wasn't gonna give any of my social media as you will learn, many small setups are being staged. So he was just setting up the scene to get my number. So he had to get the interest of wanting this book that's going to be 30 pages, right? He even forced me to give him a quote 
but I'm gonna get to how he was just kind of manipulating me that whole time. I went along with it, but when he saw that I was actually for real, I, I never received any response from him. So I just don't know what I was really dealing with as I'm now looking at all, everything that he said online. He's corroborating this with people with podcasts and radio shows and how is this possible? And then I fact checking and seeing if he's actually telling the truth. So what is this real reason for being on these shows and stuff? It's about that outreach that he's doing to be able to impact and help people that is in this prison system. I got to look at that. Does that mean we got to overlook the obvious come like uh, confabulations that it is, seems to be n not controllable. It's, he can't prevent them from spewing out of his mind. These white lies, are they lies? Can we fat check? We gotta start fat checking these men. They don't have good characters and we gotta hold them to the limelight of their characters. This is all coming from mental illness. I'm not gonna sit back and allow these people to do this to me as I'm paying my money. You trying to gauge and see if you can rob me or something? No, buddy, I'm a whole chosen seed. My spirit had me come into this restaurant just to expose you. And now that I got your whole name, you better believe I'm going to war with this devil that's on you. <laughs> that's what the reason why I had to go in that restaurant to begin with. I would have never been in this neighborhood. But God works in mysterious wonders like that. And now I'm on this, now I'm on this whole mental illness thing because that's what's going on out here. We got a bunch of psychopaths running around raping, pillaging, and dominating. And they're doing it in the old world order, the way they did it back in the day, the old rules. And they're backing this up with just violence and I'm a man. And that's enough for y'all to live out here in fear. Now we're going to expose these con artists. When you appeal to your ego, so there are, um, so I, uh, trying to appeal to what's motivating your aspirations. Obviously, writing was motivating me. <clears throat> and then there were mass questionings in the form of admirations and curiosities, as you will learn many small setups are being staged. The next sign is oversharing, <laughs> which he did a lot immediately. Oh, I don't work here. I do this. I got this. I got this business. I got these properties. All these million dollar contracts, this all started coming out of his mouth immediately. And all I asked him was if he was having a good day. <laughs> he started oversharing uh, his misfortune, he, the struggles. This is what I'm seeing now on his interviews. But that's his, that's his testimony, though. He didn't tell me much about that, but he was just trying to make it sure. I knew that he didn't work there. He was just there volunteering or something. I don't know. But they'll overshare personal information, their misfortunes, struggles, or disappointments to show vulnerabilities. And they want to disarm you in this way to create a psychological and historical profile of you to weaponize you later. They'll use need. They will gain a common ground by making you feel the need is shared in the form of a business opportunity, right? So uh, the need is tailored to my ego of writing. This is why he asked me, what did I do for a living? They design their need around whatever motivates the person to suit their desire. This is all his fantasies of making a name for himself, being well known. I understand the purpose and I'm in backing and support of that because it's actually helping people. I can see how if nurtured and he gets the right mentorship and the funds and stuff, this can get taken off the ground. I can believe in that, but I cannot ignore the, the spirit that's motivating uh, now him using like these practices that he did out in the streets to now, I guess, get networks and our network or gain leverage 
in his environment like this. He's just the way he could come at people he was conversating with another person that another one of his uh, employees had to step in and stop the conversation because I guess he had a habit of maybe asking people personal questions. Uh, so it could be a bit in, inappropriate. Well, why would y'all have him working with the customers if this is the way he was? I guess you can't discriminate against nobody, particularly felons. And you can't assume that they didn't get mentally damaged while in there. I'm glad I don't have to work around felons. The last time I worked around somebody who had a criminal record, he ended up getting fired because he got caught. He was a manager at Wendy's. He got caught on the camera screwing one of the employees at on the front of the counter of the lobby of the restaurant. It's just right in. <laughs> he was crazy anyways. Anyways, <laughs> but that was the reason why I was like, I can't work around these type of people. They're quick tempered, they hard to deal with. It's the antisocial personality. And this is gonna get worse and worse because the econo economy is driving me into criminality. Y'all don't see the problem here? Why well, we need to start checking these uh men who are running capitalism and and all of these the establishments of these economic practices. We gotta start checking them to make it more equal for people who are suffering because it's tearing the society down now. It's beginning, it's becoming too, too dangerous for men out here now. And we're being complicit about it. What else are they doing? They're asking. It's a friendship becomes a business partnership. So now I'm doing work for him for a hundred. He wanted me to give him a quote right then and there, pressure me to do it. I just spit it out. I said, okay, we'll do it. Well, what kind of writing are you trying to? He can even tell me the details of this book as he's asking me for my number and putting it in his phone real quick. I'm texting you right now. <laughs> then send me the website, his website as well. When I, I try to open it up and say, a page not found. That was suspicious. You find yourself in a unique position to be helping uh, and uncomfortable to say no. So it was almost as if I got kind of pressured to now be his ghostwriter. This happened as he was forcing me to give him a quote for a book that he now wants me to write for him at only 30 pages about trauma. Uh, the next thing that they'll do, another trait, is compromise. Through their questioning, uh, through their questioning has 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 also been learn, learning and, and as they're questioning you, they're learning and listening with for your weaknesses and your compromise. They'll try to get you to reveal something about yourself that you likely not want to be shared with anyone else. He asked me very quickly what I did for a living and then asked me where I was from and more specifically which part. The same with question that made me about my writing, what kind of books I wrote. But he never asked me about my name or the name of my books or any interest in buying my book. But pay attention to that too. When they are related to the topic, when I related to the topic on trauma that he wants to write about. In fact, he has already, when I went out and did research with this guy, I actually found a book that he had already published and it was published by a legitimate publishing company and everything. Uh, and I bought the book and I'm very curious about it because he never brought this book up. He made it seem as if he never had any, this was his first book that he was trying to write about. Uh, so I paid attention to this as well. Why didn't he bring that book up? Anywho, so he, so he already published this book on, and it's on Amazon. Why did he need me to write another book for him when he already has a publisher? Publisher, but he's a very intimidating man in prison system. As we, at least, this is how he's painted himself. Um, and he's just a very fascinating man to listen to. Very, very much so. 
so much about his childhood, but he's so articulate and he talks about his trauma in just such an articulate and well thought out way. You can tell so much empathy has been restored in him and the love, and but that, that's that mental illness that's still there, that narcissism. So he could, we can still have good intention men out here that are pursuing whatever virtue that they want as a man, but they're going about it in aggressive ways and they're being influenced by other people in their environments who they don't want to be different and alienated from because they still got this pack mentality. And all of this fear and intimidation that y'all fostered in this society, man, is now turning on y'all. And it's not going to get better for y'all because you're not learning to heal through love. That's going to be the only way for you to break all these mental bondages. This Hittite spirit is not going to come off of you. Uh, it's going to be latched onto you and they're going to just keep attracting you to violence, crime. And y'all going to be setting yourself up to be around aggressive men who are just taking y'all out by appearance now. And it's just defeat for loners, timid men. Any infinite type of man with sensual characteristics, they're taking you out, masculating you. And they now kind of chemically take take you out this way because of how society has tried to chemically emasculate them in their society. So where they have to resort to all this violence and aggression and fighting with other people to get this aggression up out of them. But they know that testosterone has taken a hit because they feel frustrated constantly as they see in the women CEOs constantly in charge. And they know they're making more money than them because they got income coming in. So that's emasculating them and undermining them. They're masculine prerogatives as well. Y'all don't see this, this, why this man is so angry right now. I can't believe that the narcissism and the cap men who is running capitalism. I can't believe that narcissism is so strong on you that you can that you okay with masochism. Then your pride and your dignity being stripped from you. And then there's gonna be utter defeat after that. Once they take your booty, I want you to know that because he ain't gonna respect you after that. Because he's gonna be seeing you as a woman after this, just structurally of how we view categorically male and female. Once you assume that role, you get categorically placed as a woman. Do they not treat you as a woman? Do not want you to shave like a woman? So that shows you that it's all socially derived. And then respect is obviously not gonna come after that. And it's just, and then the fact that he's also still dealing and not getting over his aggressions and his hate for this white man for creating all of these systems it's all more unlikely that it's going to turn into some type of uh, trans. To, it's like a infanticide, but trans infanticide. That's probably what it's going to end up turning into because y'all going to be the new trans women and they just going to go out killing y'all off. That's, I'm just trying to think about it in terms of natural selection. So y'all want to avoid that at, at all costs. That reason why the truth needs to be come up by eradicating all these systems of oppression and start re reworking the establishment so we can create social systems that are align and comport with our new values now of love, empathy, and everything that we're promulgating still, that's still being dictated by this Bible. That y'all also assume are having, or claiming to be the benefactors of. So once this all becomes aware to this man, this natural selection is just almost guaranteed that his aggression is going to start taking this energy of deceptions up out of y'all, no matter how beautiful you try to make yourself uh, and disarm this man's aggression for you. Because if he could kill the bio mother, he's more likely, well, I mean, he's more likely going to come out of the trans woman next. It's already the black woman due to the black trans woman due to his self hatred, but then he's going to start valuing the whiteness because black. Uh, influence is now coming in to the mind. So we're going to start valuing darks, darker skin. So we're just going to start seeing this white skin as as the old construct. And it was an illusion of valuing that. And then they're going to see the deceptions of how you were just using it to keep them pacified. That's going to turn into anger and aggressions. <laughs> so it don't matter how beautiful you are. 
because it's all a form of manipulation due to the narcissism, due to your inter, due to uh, your sociopathy and psychopathy tendency traits, and all of this is making you be manipulative to change your sex out here and regress and make yourself just feel like the illusion of a woman to this man, so you can keep him distorted. You don't see how the mental illness is ramping up in you to to keep inducing this in yourself and changing the patterns in the society. I'm not saying it's deceptive, but it, was this how, who you were? Or are you just doing it as a form of survival? This is manipulation. Uh, and everything that's done in the dark is going to come into the light. This man is going to start respecting you, even in this prison system. They're going to start organizing gang rapes on these trans, white trans girls. It don't matter as soon as you get in there. Y'all think this is so fun utilizing this BBC. They turn it on y'all. It's going to get real violent and rageful out here with you. All that attraction, all that desire and temptation is going to turn to compulsive rage. And they're going to start coming out to y'all. And then it's going to be the, the cis male next. It's coming. I want y'all to see the manipulations due to all y'all psychopathies. And it festered even on the inside of y'all has now left y'all vulnerable to this man's rage. And he's never gonna turn back now because y'all have left the door open and the booty hole open for him now. I met a, a real true cold blooded stone cold killer who looked at me dead in my face uh, and was the nicest, sweetest person. The handshake he gave me was so pleasant and so soft. I would have never thought that I would find a stone cold killer and a robber and a murderer and all this stuff. So you never know who you're meeting out here. These are the type of men that are turning on y'all. And it's gonna get worse and worse. They can't get jobs, they can't make money, they can't earn a living, they can't feel manly, they feel so unmasculine. Y'all don't care about them. Y'all don't even lift a finger and give them two dollars as they're asking you for money out here on these streets. Y'all want this black man to be Broke, busted, and humiliated. You don't think they about to call coming for you? It's coming. It's not coming from anger while I'm telling you this. It's coming. Y'all gonna be looking behind y'all back constantly with y'all kids. Y'all can't get no peace. Which one is the hostile one? You ain't gonna know. It's gonna surprise you. <laughs> it's gonna be a surprise attack every time with y'all. Look at the manipulations due to y'all mental illnesses. Y'all need to start being real about y'all antisocial personalities, all y'all aggressions, all y'all narcissistic personalities. They're there at festering y'all. Y'all some social paths. So a lot of y'all, and that's fueling all this, this manipulative and conniving and shrewd behavior that is doing nothing but setting y'all up because it's dark and evil. So I'm using y'all bodies as decoys. We know that you we, we know what's going on out here. Guys being aware of it and just wanting to just bring up this darkness and this evil in y'all. It's mental illness. It's demonic. It's mental illness and it's demonic. It's mental illness and it's demonic. And it's going to be rooted out. One psychopath with a vision at a time. And if God is implicated in his life, God, get him to his destination. But don't let him hurt anybody on his, I guess, freight train to success and glory. Because it seems like he's trying to get there at all, all costs, according to what he has said. And um, I don't know if he's still in the business of hurting other people to get at the top, but it didn't work in the prison system. Hopefully he doesn't have to resort to any violence out here in this free world, but he still has his ambitions where if he had to use whoever he has to use to get what he wants. And he just so happened to meet a person like me. Will he ever contact me about this book uh, endeavor? I don't know. But God is giving me the energy to research and focus on this mental illness that I'm noticing clearly in his personality. And it's a lot of men's personalities. And we just have the institutions that keep y'all dominant and keep people in fear. And that's the only illusion that's, that's that's not shattering, that's keeping these systems in place. That's the only thing that's sustaining this, is the fear and the aggressions. Wow.
and we got a God up here that's going to sit back and I guess wait for us to just rise up against it, you know. <laughs> get well, man, because God really does love you. It's going to get worse for y'all out here. And I've set up the whole condition for how psychopathy is going to take y'all down. Petty crimes, all y'all disorders, illusions, so all your psychosis, the depression, y'all suicidalities are going to ramp up. Uh, y'all are going to be functional, sexually regulated, constantly in, in jail, psychiatric problems. <laughs> y'all really want this? These health problems? All y'all distorted thoughts are going to come into play. And y'all just never going to feel content in y'all lives. Get a purpose out here. Get some real purpose. Go get a drive and be a man and go get some real virtues out here and stop fucking. So, really, that's the real big thing right here. Y'all just got these secular practices out here glamorizing all this alcohol, constantly in huddles at bars, still doing these low vibrational activities. Come on, save your money. Go work out. Go get a gym membership. We got to start being men out here, whatever that means to y'all. But it got to be, a, we got to change the game for 2024. Stop being these beta males that's just giving them uh, regressing con every day. And it's in their personalities. They're not regulated. They can't be around high vibrational people. They defeated working behind these coffee shops, 38 years old, grown ass man, six foot tall with an apron on. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not looking down on it, but y'all not happy. And this is going to get worse and worse. Y'all going to make less and less money. Y'all going to have the resources to do anything. Y'all know what that defeat going to look like when you're seeing these women making more money. It's going to get better and better for them because they, they're not going to give up and they're not going to miss this opportunity to get their freedom. This is going to keep y'all, this is going to make y'all more and more demonic, more and more aggressive. It's more and more hating life and hating yourselves. That's all it's going to do. And it's going to be compounded on this insanity, all this psychopathy and sociopath, narcissism, antisocial personalities. That's what it's being compounded on. And y'all self-hatred that's sustaining this all. God, I want y'all to heal yourselves. Heal yourselves. I'm praying every day for this man to heal yourself. I'm sorry that it had to come out this way. But... I just can't help it who God is attracted me to out here. And it's these psychopaths with these lavish, grandiose stories of doing all y'all little notorious things and going to all these different countries and saving the world and being called and being the in demand. And all of this, y'all got this all in y'all mind. I want y'all to know a lot of it is just escape, escapism, fantasies, and, and just things that y'all just kind of confabulated it into your mind and give y'all a sense of escape out of the reality that you're wearing that uniform just making 10 or 11 dollars an hour and you can't accept it at all as you're just denying where you're working denying how much money you make and can't escape the defeat of y'all hoods and y'all always messed up dysfunctional relationship with low vibrational chicks that y'all not happy with because y'all really want that trans woman for some reason because y'all haven't been feeling masculine in this sense. Because this has all been a part of y'all manhood. And it's been undermined by the ventriloquist that sits with tits, the chick with the dick, and beautiful white ivory skin, and Becky with the good hair looking at you like, and what? It's all, it's just, it's just all phony out here. I'm telling you, it's just all so phony. Y'all need to get real with yourselves. Y'all need to get real with God. God is seeing all this hypocrisy and for sure is going to make sure that th this whole male gets taken down by any means necessary because he's living with falsities, untruths in himself. And I see that if this is a vision that's by God, then it's gonna all make sense eventually, and it's all in his own mind. But looking outside in, if I can just have, if I can see God 
the vision, if I could believe in what seems so impossible, if I could see that zero and believe in that zero percent and think of it as a possibility, then I can know that God is going to get him to his destination. And everything that looks crazy and psychopathic and sociopathic, narcissistic and antisocial per, and, and personality, it's all was working and, and designed to masterfully reveal the nativity of God. And that's the same when it comes to my life. So this is such a mirror reflection for me. Am I dealing with also these disorders in myself? And God was just introducing me to this person to help me see that this was in me, but it didn't matter because that I was going to get me to my destination as I'm seeing him out here with all his, you know, websites and being on these podcasts and standing in front of groups of people talking, counseling, and doing that work that God put in him to do and being that good storyteller. I'm seeing the gift. But why is he saying he's got all these other things? That's that personality, that that fracturedness. And it might not ever get healed in his lifetime, but at least he's doing that purpose. And God is just getting him, dragging him on with determination. You should meet this type of character. But also recognize when it's being also combined with brokenness and that soul not healing. And know that that is a spirit. It just needs to be prayed for, rebuked, and delivered. And he'll get to his destination, and I believe in him. But it's a wake-up to other people who don't want to have a vision, who don't want to get, hear the call of God, because or else he would have remained in that prison cell had he not turned his life around and went back to school and left himself opportunities to be able to go to Harvard or get an education in his life. This is an amazing story, uh, full of questions, but full of amazing gems that you could take uh, when you're dealing with somebody who has been neglected, who's been the victim of childhood trauma uh, and never had the attunements and just the nurturing and never being loved and always just feeling so alone and abandoned in his life. This is the fraction that you're going to get as God is going to be dragging you towards your destiny. It's not going to look pretty, logical, rational. It's going to look very crazy. It's going to look very psychotic. And even a person like me will question it. Uh, but I know that I'm not questioning that gift that's on the inside of him and that vision that I know is going to be revealed at God's appointed time. And it just so happened to meet me. Uh, and maybe it was just for a brief moment just for me to learn something about who I am. Maybe it was a reminder that just as crazy as his story is and how I don't believe him as I'm looking at all these trying to find and that check all these things about himself. Is it me who has this crazy schizophrenic personality? Why am I all on these websites looking and back checking this guy? <laughs> Why am I taking so much interest in his person now? Why am I so interested in these jail, jailbird type people? I'm asking God also in my affirmations as I'm also meeting people who are working as counselors and executive directors of nonprofits to dealing with inmates and stuff. What are you trying to tell me about this guy? I don't have any history of being locked up. I just remember myself one time and I went to jail for a weekend for shoplifting for two days straight. I had a roommate. He was quiet. We didn't speak. I didn't eat. And I remember being out in the courtyard with my orange jumper on and all the little groups outside. And I thought, this is definitely not the place for me. I got approached one time in the bathroom by down low. Took me off guard because I thought, where, how, where do you expect us to do it at? We're in this open bay with like 75 dudes or more. But that's what they wanted in there. <laughs> They'll find some way of getting it real quick at the at the bathroom stall, anything. I'm standing there. Uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. 
Schön die Wehe. <lacht> all right. So I guess I'll end it there. I got all my this up out of me. We're just dealing with all these mental illnesses, and I just want y'all to be aware of it. I, I didn't want me to tell the whole story of this guy. And it doesn't matter. I just know where it's coming from now. So I was childhood neglect. He never felt loved, seen, heard, mentored, understood. And he felt like everybody just ignored all his gifts that he knew that he had on the inside of him. And God is now in his adult life just trying to birth all of that back up. But it's got to come through all of these, all of his disorders that has been accumulating from his life. And I, I got to overlook all of the antisocial personality, his con artist person nature the way he come off and just his overbearingness i gotta overlook all of this his his, his history of criminality and robbing people and stuff <laughs> and manipulating i gotta look, overlook at it and realize that he's at least trying in his life all of this looks like that he's trying and i just need to take he needs we need to start appreciating people who are just trying out here we're dealing with so much. Just appreciate these black men a little bit more, whatever they're doing, even if they're on the train selling headphones, it might be illegal, but he's trying. At least he'd be at home doing something, smelling weed or something. He's got the energy to go out and sell things and inter be a, you know, have his own business. We judge that all the while not helping him out or buy anything from him. So I realized this man is defeated from the jump. He can't do anything out here to get no respect and for people to like him, to see him, to hear him, and he's feel unheard and ignored. This man is so depressed and broken as he's dealing with his, his personality disorders and the narcissism. And he ain't even feeling even the hurt because he don't have empathy even for himself. And he doesn't feel his own emotions because his left hemisphere is broken and offline. He can't make even sequential sense of how he's feeling. Wow. Now see what's going to happen in the society. We allow this brain to come, become even more dysfunctioned. We got to heal it with love. We got to heal it with validation. At least I had to show him that I was willing to do his work for him. As he, I'm realizing he has a whole nother book that's well published, edited with a beautiful cover. The, the man is doing the damn thing Where, wherever he's going. I don't know. He knows. Only he knows. It's in his head. But I know that he has these other traits in his personality. And I want to tell y'all that, yeah, we got to start not, we can't ignore these. Start fact checking these people and their ambitions and, and what they're believing. Just start questioning men out here and stop making them think that they're normal uh, and are they uh, guided by something that is rational and logical when they're actually being misguided due to us just being complicit due to fear. And I wanted to challenge this man. He's expecting y'all not to challenge, question him, second guess him, back check him double back on what he's saying or hold him accountable to anything. He's been allowed to just get on everybody's podcast and he want to tell their stories of who they are and everything and what they saw in that prison system, but then I tell him and get into the truth of their brokenness and how they're still not healing. And how they did see so much spiritual and psychological defeat. And why are people still so confused out here when this is all social condition is that they're realizing that people change and their their behaviors are variable every given the circumstances. So they're being complicit and not opening up about this. And because they don't even feel like that they really even run the establishment of heteronormativity because it was being it was just constructed by the white man and how he wanted family, nuclear families to run. Maybe the ancestral traits of intergenerational families is still in this in the heart of this black man which is why he doesn't fully take in and adopt nuclear family constructs or why he respects heteronormativity uh and just the priest 
the shut up Cornelius. <laughs> Bye.